God will give you praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let get seated. And let us get seated, please. Hallelujah. Thank you. You know, from today, the service is closed. Our Sunday service is closed at 12 30. Without fail from today. Okay? No wasting of time. Every week, it finishes 12 30. But today, we are even going to finish earlier than 12 30. Because we need to have another service in Dublin. Hallelujah. I will be a good service to us if I don't introduce the subject that I want to continue to teach, which I touched on briefly last week. And I want to quickly touch on it for about 10 minutes. And I mean it. Hallelujah. Amen. Lord, I ask for an anointing over your word. Amen. Let your word mix with faith in the heart of the people. Let it profit them that hear it. Lord God Almighty, find a place in the heart of your people. Let your word enter. Lord, breathe over your word. Pour your grace on my lip of clay this morning. Let me speak your word with simplicity and understanding. With grace and style that only the Holy Ghost gives. In Jesus' name. Amen. So, last week we started talking about love. And then I took my text from the book of Galatians chapter 5 or 6. Where the Bible says, in Christ Jesus, you're lost in thought. You're thinking of the children. Anyway, happy Mother's Day, mothers. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want you to listen to me for just about 10 minutes and don't be distracted and let this be deposited in you. Where the Bible says in Galatians chapter number 5 or 6 that in Christ Jesus, leaders in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus, in every, you're, you're going to be disturbing me there, please. You're going to be disturbing me, please. In every other place, other things can obtain. But in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision have failed anything. But faith that works by love, or faith that works through love. When we were teaching about faith in the month of February, we told us that all of our life depends on faith. And that's true. First John chapter 5, verse 4, the Bible says. Whatever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world. Even our faith. So outside of the faith that we have in Christ Jesus, we can have victory. We'll be defeated in all aspects of life. Mountains are moved by faith. As a matter of fact, I read through Hebrew chapter 11, where the Bible mentions all the names in the hall of faith. Of faith. He mentioned Abraham, he mentioned Isaac, he mentioned Jacob, he mentioned Moses, he mentioned Gideon, he mentioned David, he mentioned all of them. Gideon. He even talked about women who have their death raised back to life. People who conquer kingdoms, who stop fathers, who turn lions to pieces. And the Bible says that they were only able to do all these things as a result of faith. And before going down there, in verse 6 of Hebrew chapter 11, says, without faith, it is impossible to please God. For anyone that must come to God and believe that he is and is the one of those who does the king. And I told us that what the difference between one man and another is not that maybe God designed their destiny differently. A lot of the time it's the diff it's fake differential. Somebody kept feeding on the word of God and he kept growing. He kept growing. And the, the, the spirit man looks fresh. Well watered. Well watered. He's able to take on more things. That somebody else who is not feeding on the word of God, who is feeding on Snapchat and feeding on what people say. Everybody's, everybody's life is determined by what they listen to. We concluded by saying that words are spirit. That every word you hear is a spirit. And that spirit is going to take a hold of you. You want to multiply the spirit of faith, hear the word of faith. That's the word of God. You won't know when miracle signs and wonders begin to happen to you. You won't know when you begin to take content. And people say, how are you able to do this thing? Because they, you cannot but become an outward expression of the spirit that has entered into you. So I bet you, you want 
God to use you exponentially. Go to watch people that God is using exponentially. Check through the Bible and see the people that God has used exponentially. You will soon discover that you will be exponentially used of God in a great manner. The disciples said that when they became apostles, they came, we cannot but talk of the things we heard and saw. And in 1 John, John began to talk, he said, we are telling you of the things we saw, we handled, we tasted of the word of life. That Jesus Christ, the Son of God, became flesh, we touched him, we wrapped with him. And then it was very easy for them to do miracles. Why? Because to Moses, God sold his ways, to the children of Israel, his act. When you know the ways of God, you will produce his act. Very easy. So when somebody says that God is not using me, it's because you are not available. God uses people who are available. What is availability? Availability is to give yourself over to those things. Paul told Timothy, he said, give yourself over to these things so that your profiting may appear to all. When you give yourself over, your profiting will appear. I only have to lie on my face anywhere I am going to preach. I don't have to prepare a particular message because my own life, my own day is filled with listening to one message, reading one Bible, and reading another. That I'm filled to the brim. Just here, Pastor David, you'll be talking somewhere. I just lie on my face. Lord, let your fire be on your word. Just spring any word in my heart, we will, we will deliver it. So, but as big as faith is, that your whole life depends on it. You may never get married if you don't have faith. You may never start the call of God over your life if you don't have faith. Outside of faith, you will not be able to do anything for God. Nothing. Nothing. You, will you be able to do outside of faith? I remember one day, I went to my pastor in Nigeria at that time, which is Bishop Brown Peters now, and uh, in Ilefe, and I said, I've been having weird dreams, and I've been hitting in the dreams. And I believe that something is wrong with me that I need deliverance. Please, I came for deliverance. I went to him in the office, I said, I need deliverance, I came for deliverance. And he looked at me, he said, I'll pray for you a number of times. He said, what you need is faith is not deliverance. And he showed me Colossians chapter 1, verse 13. He said, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us to the kingdom of his dear son. Verse 14, in whom we have redemption through the forgiveness of our sins, even by his blood. As he was talking in faith and time to me. He lay hands on me, pray for me, I went to, as I got to him, I said, demons. Say, so you give me food. If you give me food without water today, you see what I will do. From that day, the thing stopped. Because I know that my head is now hot. Faith has, that I now got to know that I've been delivered. Faith just entered into me. It's about faith. It's by faith. Deliverance is by faith. Healing is by faith. God can heal you and say, I don't believe I'm healed. Then you are not healed. God can deliver you and say, you do. I don't believe I'm delivered. Then you are not delivered. You don't know that faith, doubt come to all of us. Even after you are married, you still be asking, did God ask me to marry this person forever? Even after you have had this, have seven children. I've seen a woman of God come to me and say, I have three children for my husband, they are grown up. I don't think it's the man God wants me to marry. That I, God himself will provide me with a man that I will marry. Who say, my sister, you are married. <laughs> That's how people divorce. Because now doubt spring up. Because the first thing the devil will do when it comes to anybody, that's why your faith has to be strong. And what is strong faith? First, strong faith is a product of word, art, and art, exhaustively hard and hard, non-stop hearing of the word. Non-stop. Because anytime the devil comes, he will say, as God said. He will say, as God said to what God has said. The devil will come to you and say, do you think you are a Christian? He can even tell you, you know you are a Muslim. They say, yes. <laughs> you agree with him and say, yes, you need to do a live today. They say, yes, that. <laughs> I was watching a preacher yesterday who used to have thousands of people. He was on the board of regents of many universities. Great. All of a sudden, he was a big preacher in America, known everywhere. All of a sudden, doubt sprang up in his heart that air doesn't exist. And he began to preach air doesn't exist. The whole of the church, everybody left. And I was watching him still preaching yesterday, talking about the fact that the way we go to church and whatever is not true, it's not normal. God doesn't want us to be, when the evil spirit goes to them and they accept him. Bible is very basic. The word of God is very basic. But then, answer. But then, as powerful as faith is, the Bible says it does not work except with love. It's like saying that same car does not
not work except there's a phone. You have a powerful SIM card. You've loaded it with so much money, maybe 20,000 euros. But there is no phone. Or there is even phone and you fix it in the phone. The phone doesn't have battery. So that's why I said that a lot of people take in so much of the word of God and they, they, they presume they're going to do so great. They've been praying, they've been doing everything and yet everything about their life comes to sell. Why? Because there is no law of life. What is law? What I want to say today and I continue next week. Nobody has capacity to love. All of you think you can love. What you feel a lot of the time is something on the surface. Nobody has capacity to love. That's why God commands us to love. We have capacity to have faith. That's why Jesus will ask people, why are you of no faith? But capacity to love is not in anybody. Capacity to love is not in anybody. That is why in Matthew 18, 3, you know, let me, show you, let me tell you this. A lot of ministry has started, a lot of people do evangelism, a lot of people do acts of good things without love. You say how? Look at 1 Corinthians 13 and I think I need to close. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 13 before we look at it. And I will expand more on this next week. Um, we love your name. You're the beautiful one. Look at it. First Corinthians, no, no, second Corinthians chapter 13. This is second. No, I'm going to first Corinthians. Why did I open? First Corinthians 13. Why did I open second Corinthians? First Corinthians 13. He said, though I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, and I have no love, I am become a sounding symbol. Some sounding brass or a tinkling symbol. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and I have no love, I am nothing. <laughs> Although I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burnt, and I have no love, it provides me nothing. <laughs> so that means somebody can be giving everything he has. And it's not done in love. Somebody can even give their body to be burnt. I'll die for God. And it's not done in love. Somebody can be speaking in the tongues of men and the tongues of angels. And it's not done in love. They can have gift of prophecy. Understand all mysteries and all knowledge. And have faith and to remove mountains. And it's not done in love. You know the reason why? Because love is not in the physical realm. A lot of things people call love is not love. That is why Matthew 18 3 says, except you be converted and be like little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom. It's in the kingdom will obtain that love. That's why when you look at children, Jesus said, don't chase away these children. Say, the way they, you are, they are, say their angels are beholding the face of God. So many of adult angels cannot behold the face of God. It's just doing like this before God says, the way that man is behaving, God, I can't look at your face. But children, their heart is so pure. <laughs> the only way anybody can have love is when they are converted and become like a child. Their heart is so pure. <laughs> the only... Are you listening to what I'm saying? Are you listening to what I'm saying? When you are converted, it leads to... For... <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Stanley, uh, Brother Kingsley was trying to do some things with the speakers. And if you hear the sound of the speaker now, you see that it's different from the speaker we used to. There's a conversion that went on. From the real speaker that are inside the speaker to another spe to other speakers. Put them there. Tweet about and fix them. You don't say, ah, I like this kind of your speaker. I want to buy it. You go and buy the same thing and you discover they don't produce, they don't project the same sound. Why? That's a conversion. You know the reason why I'm saying this? You could even be coming to church and you think you love God and you don't. You know Jesus told his disciples, say, people who will present you to be killed, they will think they are doing service for God. Paul was persecuted.
persecuting the church all around and he thought he was doing service for God. The people who killed Jesus, they said, ah, God, with so much love. That is why Jesus looked at them and looked at them and said, can every one of you be converted and be like children? Children don't have any ambition. They don't have any hate. They don't have any prejudice. You know, if they enter to the class and the teacher is teaching them, Ruben, if they enter to the class and the teacher is teaching them, they open their heart to hear. Hard up. As soon as you come into the church, you say, it's a black man teaching me to do. say whatever you want to say. Prejudice. He said, except you are converted and be like little children, you shall not obtain. Because God is love. There is a conversion that is needed for God to enter. All of you will be thinking, how is it that Jesus was able to do everything? The only thing that proved that Jesus loved anybody, he said, there is no greater love than anybody can sow to his brother than this, than I lay down my life. It's not that he did miracles. It's not that he did signs or he did wonders, but that he loved. You can be doing things for people without loving them. Out of obligation. You can be informed in charity works. He said, I can bestow my goods to people and I have no love. It's the Bible that says it. He said, ah, this way these people love people, they give people, they give food, they give everything. The Bible says, there is no love. And accept this love. <laughs> Let me quickly say this and then we close. Let me say this and we close. Let me show you something. Ephesians chapter 3. That is why somebody was asking me, how is it that somebody will get to heaven and God will say, I know you not, you workers of iniquity. How many of you have seen a lot of gospel singers and that there's a difference between gift and love? Gift is not love. Love is total sacrifice of self without any exhibition of any of it whatsoever. Love does not give and so that we gain. Love does not do and say we give. <laughs> Jesus will heal people, say don't let anybody know. You know, sometimes you can be convinced, you see people jumping up and down, oh Jesus, oh Jesus, and you say, oh, I've come over there, and then they get to heaven and go say, I do not know you. Another thing, he said, a lot of people's works when they get to heaven will be bombed. Some people don't even know the reason why they are doing what they are doing. They just do. In Ephesians chapter 3, Paul began to pray. <laughs> he began to pray for people in Ephesians. Ephesians chapter 3. Come and see. Come and see. Love is not in the earthly realm. That's why a lot of people marry each other and they say, you don't know how much we love each other. You don't know the meaning of love. Only when you know that the person has stamina sickness, the person has stamina sickness, and you can still be carrying the person around, and you can still be kissing the person when the person becomes a mass of bones, and you have no run, I know that is love. Not when the flesh is fresh. You say, you don't know how much I know. When they remove all the physical features that can make your life happy, they remove all of them and have mass of bones, you can see the whole bit of the eyes. That's where Jesus got to say, is this thing necessary? And Father said, you must drink this cup. He said, I will. Not my will, you will be done. And Paul began to pray in the vessels. Why am I not there? Ephesians chapter 3. From verse 14, he said, For this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was praying for believers. To whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named, that he will grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might in the spirit in the inner man, that Christ may dwell in your heart by faith, that you be rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the same what is the breadth, what is the length, what is the depth, and what is the height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes on understanding. You don't understand. He passes on understanding. That you might not be filled with all the fullness of God. Some of you cannot explain the reason why you want to do for God what you want to do for God. You can't. You can't explain the reason why you are in the church. He doesn't know God is going to do me good. Everything is going to be fine with my life. 
He said, I'm praying for you that you'll be rooted in love. You'll be able to comprehend love. He said, with this, you know what he said? He said, everything has been hanging. You use faith. You use giving. You use this. You use that. He said, everything is hanging. But when love is rooted in you and as you, he said, you will now be filled with the fullness of God in all things. You are not here. That is why I keep asking this question. If anybody says, I want God to use me, I want God to use me very greatly, I say, if God wants to send you to Afghanistan, how do you find it? Or God wants to send you to Pakistan, how do you find it? And you know that the only thing they do there is, as a Christian, they will behead you, and God says, I'm sending you there. How do you find it in your heart? That's when you will know that we are very flimsy and we are in service. And the Bible says we need to be comforted and be like little children without ambition. Without the reason why. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There's a reason why. That's when you discover that spot in, in the churches over here in, in, in Europe. You know, somebody's coming to church, bubbling, enjoying himself. All of a sudden you say something. As a result of saying something, they are gone. <laughs> because there's no space for love. Have you listened to what I'm saying? It's not because of the love of God that motivated them down to the church. It's because of love for something else. Drive for something else. Somebody, some people want to, you know, finesse their own ambition. They want to finesse their own greatness. They want to perfect their own star. That's the reason why they are connecting with people. Why are you preaching? They find a reason. Why are you praying? They find a reason. That's a physical reason over all things. When that reason is no longer there, say, why, why am I with the person? My love was tested one day. I closed. One of my love was tested one day. We went to pray for a particular lady. This lady was not only dying of HIV. She had sores all over her body. You know, so many of us will say, I like healing anointing of God, healing anointing of God, healing anointing. That is a, that is a realm. I will touch on this next. That is a realm where you don't pray for things to happen. Things happen because you have gotten to that realm. You're not here. He said, I'm praying that you'll be rooted when you are rooted in love. You know, Paul would just enter somewhere, they say somebody died. He was preaching somewhere, Eutychus. Eutychus fell down, maybe from first story down, and broke all his bones and died. They are saying, hey, hey, hey. Oh God, come on. He didn't even say, Oh God, come on. He just went down there. He said, come up and preach you. Why are you doing this? And he told them his life is in him. He brought him up. He said they were joyful. Paul was not joyful. He could still continue to preach. Brother Kingsley, you're not hearing. He still continued to preach. That's a realm you get to that things happen on their own. That's the realm of love. God has to comfort your heart. The person you say you love. Can you stop everything you do when you are married to that person? You stop everything you do for the person to continue his own life. And you, you are retarded. <laughs> you break down. <laughs> Love of convenience. So we go to this woman. And she has sores all over her body. I mean, as in saw, the thing bringing out water. This lady used to be a member of our church. And we love her as a member of the church. I love her. But as she was dying, sores all over her body. This thing was bringing out water and bringing out blood and bringing out everything. And we got there and we were praying. And you know the way I will pray. Father, heal. And my assistant moved towards this lady, laid his hand, I can't hit, laid his hand on the saw coming all over his hand. <laughs> That was the day boys were separated from men. I told myself, this guy is greater than me. I can even till now I'm still looking at. So you have to be converted and be like a little child. You see a little child, the mother is dead. That child is still there, mommy. Are you sleeping? Wake up, wake up, mommy. As a matter of fact, sometimes, let me tell you, before even a husband or a wife die and has been sick for some time. The heart of the husband of the wife is saying, when is this thing going to be over? I need life. You are not hearing me. 
we need to be converted and be like little children. Then God will now show you the reason why you are. One pastor said he was fasting one time. 40 days fasting and prayer. What is the fasting about? For God to give him power to heal, to do miracle signs and wonders. And he said in the midst of the 40 day fasting and prayer, I said God just came to him and said, How oh, my servant? Why are you fasting? I said, oh, 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 we are fasting because of your kingdom. He said, God asked again, why are you fasting? He said, we are fasting because of ministry. You know, if God asks you one question and you first of all answer him what you think you have, when he asks again, you, say, you know there's something there. Why are you fasting? He, said, he changed the answer because of the ministry. He said, God still asking, why are you fasting? He said, because of anointing. He said, God asked, anointing for what? He said, and I told God, so that as I go out, they call me for preaching, I go out, as I touch this one, it falls. Noise everywhere, money increase. He said, God said, can you go and eat? <laughs> <laughs> when God converts your, and your heart, if your heart, when your heart becomes plainly because of eternity, I was talking to my wife in the middle of the night. There are so many things you think about, only you don't think about this, don't think. Thinking just solely of eternity. No matter what happened, let it happen. But for the sake of what eternity, by eternity, through eternity for eternity. When it's not that there is something I need to gain from this, there is something I need to have from this. And God has said, When you get to that point, you know, Paul got to a point, he said, I'm about to be poured forth as a drink. My time is near. I said, Look at this one. That is coming, and you are happy telling everybody I will be poured out as a drink or as an offering. My time is a they were totally sold out, no ambition. He was not thinking, oh, who will take care of my mother? Who will take care of my children? Hey, I didn't have any children on that. Hey, hey, no one, no nothing. When you get to this point, these people don't pray big prayers before God answers. They just say, Lord, this thing needs to be done. And it is done. But by the time you get to the root of so many things that are making you to do what you do, you find ambitions. God will have to remove them. Ambitions are of man. Love is of God. No man has love. God has to put it there because God is love. Paul said, I'm praying so that you'll be strengthened with might in the inner man. He's still preparing. He said, so that you'll be able to comprehend without sin the depth, the height, the breadth, and the width of God's love. And you'll now be filled with all the fullness. He said, until this, you can't be filled with all the fullness. You'll last a little bit. Are you listening? You have some little bit. You can't be filled with all the fullness. The Lord bless and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace. The name of the Lord is put on you and you are blessed forever. Go home. Go and think of this world's continuous week. The reason why people became who they became for God. And why they will not only be reckoned with here or not. When they get to heaven, they are still reckoning. How they did what they did. I can be doing everything I'm doing now on the basis of ambition. I want the church to grow. You know? That's why I'm coming to pick you. No, because that's the reason why you see it. When somebody wants to tap out of the church that is fighting. Somebody has come from another church to come and marry again the church that is fighting. Because the pastor has been planning about this is the person who will be our choir leader forever. You're planning on somebody that God has missed for their life. I said something last week, and all of you will think it's a joke. It's not a joke. That with everything I'm doing about my wife, God forbid as he comes to me one day and says, I want to move. I don't, I don't, I, I won't get bitterness. Why? Because I'm not doing what I'm doing for her. I'm doing what I'm doing for God in her. And I know my reward will wait for me in heaven. So it doesn't care what any, it doesn't matter what anybody does. It's not hard bound. My drive is not hard bound. Is eternity bound. Whatever I'm doing in the church is eternity bound. I call you, I place a cross through to you. Well, I've moved through the realm of ambition also as a person. I've gone through all of those forever. I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be at the television, I want to be this, I want to be that, I want to be that. The God said, with all these things, you get to heaven and discover you have nothing. And you are nothing. Everything that has to be done for God, in God, through God, has to be based on on total love for God and nothing else. And this thing, you need the conversion. 
this thing cannot function on you. You need the conversion. That is when, when that conversion has taken place, you don't see such people fighting in the church. They don't fight anybody. Did you read about Isaac? He was trying to dig the way that Abraham dug. And people will come there and they will fill you with sand. He will leave you with them. But you see, two people are fighting over the same brother in the church. And they are really fighting, tearing their clothes. And say, God so me, he's my own. And the other one says, God so me, he's my own. And they are fighting each other. None of them loves the brother. <laughs> when Solomon wanted to test love, what did he do? The first act of his wisdom. I hope somebody is getting something. The first act of his wisdom. Two people slept over the night. One slept over his baby. The baby died. And so they said, they wake up and the woman exchanged the, life, the living baby with the dead baby. And then... The, and they brought themselves to Solomon and said, Yeah, come and help us judge. And Solomon looked at them. I will see with love. I will see. I will see. And Solomon said, Bring the living baby. Let us call the living baby to two. The mother of the dead baby was the one who said, Yes, cut him to two so that we can have ah, ah, and this matter can go. And the man, woman who has the baby with deep love said, it's better the baby is alive than dead. I will know in my heart I gave birth to the baby. Although you seize the baby from me. Love doesn't strive. It doesn't fight. It doesn't prejudge. When he sees somebody in trouble, he's looking for how the person can come out of trouble, not how to be laughing at the person in trouble. And Solomon said, You are the mother of the baby. You, if you say one more thing, you'll be in prison yet. <laughs> It doesn't, it doesn't fight. It doesn't impose itself. It doesn't show itself. It doesn't show its flex. Jesus would rather be prepared to stay in the wilderness than for him to be throwing, taking the glory of God and showing off everywhere, like the way we want to show off now. I was telling the pastor the, over the night, I was greeting the pastor and I was telling the pastor, he said, he cannot even understand the reason why there are so many churches. He says, especially in Nigeria, there are so many churches, so many pastors. And each of the church, church of 10 people is general overseer. And you see pendants drawing down. I said, you know the reason why? Because people exalt the position of leadership in the church. It is when the pastor and his wife are coming that everybody will stand up and be clapping. Aha, uh -huh, somebody else will sit and say, ah, they will clap for me and my wife also. In my life, it's not only I'm not going to be sitting there like this because that is a, a, so much so of the flesh that people begin to receive visas and everything. You will see the name of some minister and say, God, you see, Jesus bust up international ministry. I'm telling you, practically, such names exist. Bomb the devil alive, total deliverance, international center. <laughs> you yourself in you know. Satan come up for road international mission. I'm telling you, <laughs> signpost. He said, Satan last chance international church. Last chance of Satan. Suit at, at sight. <laughs> international mission. You will know that flesh is engendering a lot of things. Because people are not, the person who is leading them is not deeply rooted in love. The people that have been led are not. That's why you discover the disciples of Jesus. None of them, after the death of Jesus, were seeking for how to be known. I want to ask you a question. Inside you now, as you're sitting down, inside you now, with whatever you want to be known, is there no traces, are there no traces of wanting to be known? Traces of wanting to be known. And some people, some people say, say that's greatness. Everybody wants to be known. We will go down to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And then I believe God will do a surgical operation. That's when you, you know, somebody went to preach this message. This message that I preached somewhere one day. And after I finished preaching it, a man who has been in ministry for many years, is a general officer of his ministry, just came to the man and said, I want to tell you, I want to submit this ministry. God didn't send me. He's been in the ministry maybe for about 20 years. He said, God didn't send me. With what you preach now, I see that I'm the one who sent myself. Please, let me be a pastor. And he became a pastor. <laughs> Under the man over here. <laughs> he submitted everything. They changed the sample, some changed it. He told everybody, this is the, God didn't send me. I've used power might to build this thing. 
when God did surgical operation. And I'm believing God that this month God will be able to do this surgical operation so that you will only live for Him alone. Things become easier. Not for yourself. You will not be built for yourself. You will be built for Him. You will be built in Him. And anything you are doing for others, you are doing out of selfless act of love. Not of act of let them recognize me. Don't they know that today is my birthday? You never see Jesus stand up in the congregation and say, ah. He said, why have you not been coming to church for the past three months? He said, why would I come to the church? A church that doesn't have recognition for somebody's birthday. Don't you know it's my birthday? Are they not supposed to sing for me? <laughs> you understand what I mean? Things that don't bother around eternity. May the Lord help us. Let's start. Next week we'll continue. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will open our eyes of understanding. That we may know the truth and walk in truth. Especially as pertains to love. In Jesus' name. Thank you.